Hello, everyone. Um, so I'm happy to um, have all of our panelists join this panel. Yeah. So um, yeah, that's to give a brief introduction for our uh, audiences of what you're doing and who you are. So let's get started from myself. Uh, so this is Jun. Sorry, uh, I was just running back. <laughs> it's a little bit. Um, so yeah, so this is Jun. I'm the vice president and technical partner of Ven uh, Sora Ventures. Uh, but I prefer to call myself as a DeFi native since uh, my first project is also in DeFi. Yeah, um, yeah, and then I really like new things, and I know, I'm friends with all of the panelists for many years. <laughs> yeah, so let's uh, move on to Tom. Yes, uh, I'm Tom Song from Roma Protocol. Yeah, actually, I joined the group of war maybe more than 10 years. Yeah, maybe uh, people in Taiwan may know me. And uh, we, uh, we are doing a DeFi protocol, uh, and it's about the option. Uh, the, the name is uh, Roma Protocol. And before that, we, ha we have a, we had a, another project, it's a DAX called uh, Joyso. Thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Jerry Lee. Uh, I am the youngest here. I mean, uh, uh, in this space for only two years. So I used to work in the bank for over 20 years. I was doing the, uh, my, my, my whole career life is trading, trading fixed income and currencies in the bank. And uh, just two years ago, I just figured out like, uh, like DeFi is like uh, so attractive and so amazing. So I decided to retire and uh, resign and jump, jump into DeFi space and I built a term structure. The reason why I be I'm doing this is because I do fixed income for my life and I find this is no such thing in DeFi. So this is something that I wanted to build up. Um, hi, I'm Yan Wen. So, uh, I'm the co-founder of uh, Perpetual Protocol. So we do uh, Perpetual Swap on chain on Arpinson. Um, the, yeah, I think that pretty much about it. <laughs> I'm Ran, uh, co-founder of Orderly Network. We're a shared order book liquidity uh, across different blockchains. Uh, currently, volume is about 200 to 700 million a day uh, on the Perpetuals. Um, and uh, we cater to all types of DeFi builders out there. So if you want to uh, plug into our liquidity, please uh, feel free to ping me. Yeah. Hi, uh, I'm Lennox. I'm the CTO of OKX. Um, we are one of the biggest exchanges, central exchanges, but we also build our WebD wallet, and we also have our ZK rollup uh, perps and DEX to be, to be launched in Australia. Cool, so uh, it's our pleasure to welcome so many OGs in the space to share their opinion with us. Uh, so let's dive into the panel since we don't have that much time. Uh, so first, I, I would like to ask everyone, like, can you share a little bit more about what's the current barriers and difficulties of working or building on-chain derivatives nowadays since most of the attentions are around like meme coins or like NMT things, uh, like for uh, more advanced on-chain derivatives is usually more difficult to build. So yeah, I can, uh, I think we can start from um, Yan Wen. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, yeah, I think that, um, um, okay, so <laughs> let me put it this way. Um, so on-chain on derivatives is hard now. Uh, I, I think mostly because of performance of blockchain, it's not there yet. Uh, most of the, I mean, like most of the blockchain we use are Ethereum based, like everyone going to scale, like, uh, you know, TPS is like 10 uh, transactions per second around there. Um, so I, I mean, like a lot of, uh, at least if you compare to like Binance, I think they can handle maybe like a thousand TPS uh, right now. So that's a gap. Um, uh, for, for smart market, I think that's probably fine because uh, uh, like actually, like like the baseline guys said that the, uh, um, you know the whole like AM movement actually, uh, we can bring liquidity to the retail like on the smart market. People can mean their own token project can bring their own token, but on derivative, it's much harder because um, people are, because you have leverage, you want to trade at the um, you know like um, you know the fastest you can you can you, you can do so. 
I do think that performance definitely uh, is the main blocker for the derivative. Got it. Like speaking of performance, I think like Jerry or Tom could also chime in because like I, if I recall correctly, um, term structure is built in on like Cosmize L2, right? To basically have cheaper gas. And for uh, Zoman, it's also on ZK Sync, right? Yeah. Um, so Jerry, would you want to share some like barriers or difficulties that were, when you were building like um, term structure? Uh, yes, thanks. So I think uh, clearly I uh, agree with Yen, what Yen said. I think uh, uh, just the short answer is a TPS constraint, right? Wherever, whatever we do on chain. I think this is something that we need to solve. But <coughs> so, but uh, the, the term structure want to, to solve the problem is on, uh, when we talk about derivatives, derivatives basically derived from some other financial instruments, right? So what that is a basic financial instrument. Uh, we don't have uh, fixed income. That's why I wanted to come here to do this. And the way we do is that we build, because fixed income is, uh, uh, actually allowed users to put their asset for a longer period of time. So I think the security is, is important. Uh, scalability is important. So that's why we build our own DK rollup. And uh, based on this layer two, and uh, we try to create a year curve for ease for, uh, uh, for BTC for uh, like major stable coins. So I think, the thing is that uh, uh, without year curve, the derivatives we are limited to what we have today, like a perpetuals. We may trade like a 10 times of the volumes than today is on perpetual protocols like products or like Zomas like uh, uh, option products or the, the swaps, right? But uh, the, we're still limited to like uh, the use case we have today, right? So we wanted to create a new use case. I think that is uh, uh, the most important things we want is like, just like we go into the bank, we, we, we see like hundreds of different products. But here uh, in DeFi, we don't have that many. And uh, this is uh, because we don't have the year curve. That's why I think this is important. Uh, to me, this is the obstacles and uh, uh, on, on chain DeFi. Got it. Uh, I, totally, uh, I totally agree with Yang Wen's uh, point of view. And, uh, but, because uh, for myself, and actually I trade uh, almost uh, maybe millions of dollars on stacks uh, every day for the perpetual future and the options. And uh, in my experience, uh, is uh, the user experience is uh, not good as uh, stacks now on, uh, for on-chain derivatives. Uh, uh, because uh, actually, uh, if I use uh, uh, on chain, on chain derivative is maybe I use, I have I will use my co wallet to sign, and it's it's not a good experience actually, and it's, it costs a lot of time, and actually uh, the user experience is not not good, and also there are other uh, cost, uh, maybe for the gas and the uh, and the convert convert time is uh, very long, so it's not easy to use actually, and also it, it has another uh, cost for the. It's, it's not easy to de deposit US, uh, uh, money from uh, our daily life to on chain. Uh, it's also a big problem. Got it. And besides performance, do um, Ren or Linux has other opinions since you guys are also, um, building things? On, on, on chain like OKX, so, so expand into on chain things. Um, or at least has already been building like share liquidity book, order books on chain. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, one of our key challenge currently is uh, we want to make sure the mechanism of a centralized system, mechanism is, I mean, the rules and the mechanism is on a centralized system is exactly the same as CKP proof system. Uh, whenever there's some mismatch, so which means that even, even the orders being matched on centralized matching engine can get rejected when we, when we, when we upload on chain. So uh, yeah, aside from performance, this is something that uh, we're still trying to figure out uh, what's the best, best way to do. That's really good. Yeah, uh, how about Rain? Yeah, so there's many uh, real life, uh, like many, many obstacles, like from the uh, onboarding part, which I think OKX Wallet and other gateways are trying to solve to fragmented liquidity. That's one of the issues that we're solving, hence shared liquidity between the chains. Um, to many like idiosyncratic issues with like the outages of blockchains, 
you know, optimism, we have a vault there. They were down for, you know, a bit of time. And then outages with bridges, right? Like we're integrated with layer zero. Layer zero is sometimes there's blockages. Um, and then like our, our users are cross-chain messaging between layer zero and our own chain, which settles all the, all the trades. And um, sometimes there's blockages there and then users can't withdraw assets. That's a big problem. Um, and then when gas prices go up a lot, right, uh, on different chains, then we have to, I mean, users are withdrawing deposits, that's crossing messages with us, and then we, are, we have our own chain, so then all the prices go up, we might have to increase withdrawal fees, things like that, but with the, the latest upgrade, that's, that's gone down quite a bit, so there's all types of issues uh, that, that deals with performance, costs, and uh, user experience. I think the user experience, like Tom said, is, is quite, it's not there, right? We're trying to make the experience on orderly like that of Binance, where users are depositing from one chain, a native asset, withdrawal from another chain, also the native asset, let's say uh, native USDC, and they don't have to deal with wrapped tokens due to any sort of bridging risk, right? I think the eventual goal is to have a DEX that looks like OKX, right? Uh, and feels like OKX, but uh, it's fully transparent, it's DeFi, and it has even the, the Web3 tokenomics that we love uh, about DeFi. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for sharing. Actually, I have some like secret alpha that I will share with you about like the infinite uh, liquidity for cross chain thing. Uh, but by the way, uh, so yeah, so thank you for sharing so many like different like uh, practical and theoretical barriers and ob obstacles around building things. Um, the follow up question is: There are so many barriers. So, what's the singularity point uh, that you see? to solve this issue, like from your perspective, also from, uh, yeah, it could be either from your perspective or your product's perspective or in general from the DeFi perspective. Yeah, anyone wanna start with this? Uh, actually, Roman has launched on ZK Sync and uh, ZK, you know, everybody knows ZK Sync is a new uh, ZK L2 and uh, it, is, uh, it supports a AA account and also Paymaster. I think it's a, a big change. And uh, uh, in, the in the traditional way, we have to uh, prepare it for, for the guests. Every time you trade, you have to sign. And, uh, uh, and, but in uh, ZK, ZK Sync, you can now pay with uh, any tokens you want. Uh, and I think it's a big uh, progress. And also, uh, AA account also suppose, uh, suppose um, not only not only the private key, the traditional private private key. It also um, maybe you can use uh, your Google account to uh, to generate a, a, a account on ZK Sync, and I think it's a big pro progress. Uh, the user experience uh, uh, improves a lot, and uh, maybe it will be like the Web two, and uh, everybody used to use it, uh, Web two uh, finance. I think it's a big, bigger improve. Got it. So, uh, so from the user, uh, user experience perspective, it has really has like some good progress, right? And then to basically approach the mass adoption. Okay, cool. So besides like uh, user experience, and then like uh, most of you are uh, talked about like the performance barrier, like the difficulties, right? Um, so after Duncan upgrade, do you see like there's um, some improvement right now? Or like in the near future, what do you see that could also help the performance things? Because like if there's a, like different LTUs, even if they can improve the performance, there will probably be some like liquidity fragmentation issue as well. Um, so yeah, anyone want to like chime in on, on this topic? Um, yeah, I can chime in on the performance. Um, I actually don't think that uh, we will have central change or like a traditional finance performance uh, anyway. I mean, like it's not about like, uh, uh, you know, our technology not advanced enough. You just, if you want to be, you know, like uh, decentralized, it's just hard. Um, so I think like, uh, so currently I think people are to try in different ways, like overly, like, um, uh, like hyper liquid, able, they uh, they want to do, build like really efficient off chain order book and then uh, populate the data on chain. Uh, that's one of way. I think that's a uh, that's really efficient. Um, yeah. So and the other, I think like the other approach is like uh, like us, like perpetual protocol. We want to build everything on chain. So it will be like automating market maker in some. I mean like uh, 
just a different design. Like we just try different designs of the Oracle making market maker. I think just, um, personally, I think that uh, these two approach will coexist for some time. Uh, just like uh, Uniswap and Sinchai Change, uh, they coexist because they have different needs. And uh, yeah, but uh, that's just, yeah, in short, I think performance can uh, be achieved and then uh, people just need to get around it. Yeah, a little bit like side notes, because um, yeah, I, I totally agree with that, because like uh, AMM and order books will be coexist forever, because like there are, in my opinion, they're like serving different questions, like serving different problems. So uh, there will always be different target audiences will use this type of, uh, like two types of things, because like when AMM was uh, firstly introduced, it was supposed to solve the loan tail asset issue for the liquidity. Because like usually in a traditional finance, if it's a order book based, uh, there's no stupid uh, market makers want to like come in and actually take the uh, counterparty risk of like tokens. Yeah. Um, so yeah, agree with that. Um, Probably like uh, I'm also curious about like what Rain's uh, point uh, point of view on this because like it's like share liquidity books that order is currently building and but it's on chain and it, it has to solve the performance issue right now right it will definitely be like less efficient of like building a centralized order book and I know like your teams also have the background of like traditional finance and then do like high frequency market making for and also do like asset management. So what's your point of view like doing a share liquidity order books or what, what's the point of that? And then um, how the performance issue affect um, your strategy or the roadmap of uh, orderly? Yeah, I, I think we're trying to be as like, it's all about users at the end of the day, right? So we have two types of users. One are the protocols building on top of us, whether they're AMMs or centralized exchanges or, or whatever. Um, and then it's their users. So then that experience has to be good, right, for them to even want to use it. And it's got to be good or as good or even better than centralized exchanges for that shift um, from CFI to DeFi. And th there's, there's so many components that, that, that come from that. It's not even just about us, it's about the onboarding, it's the fiat on rails into DeFi. I mean, a lot of missing pieces, it's about KYC or ZK KYC. So we're just solving for the, the liquidity and chain abstraction component of this equation. And we're, um, uh, and we're trying to do it as, in as decentralized and robust as possible, right? But at the end of the day, if the performance sucks, um, the users are not gonna use it, right? So we have to consider that first. Um, so our solution currently is an off-chain order book. Um, so kind of similar to DYDX uh, V2. Um, and then it settles on chain, our own orderly chain via OP stack. So then all the balances and trades are printed by, by block onto the chain, which links via layer zero to all the other chains that we have our custody vaults. So then if our centralized order book shuts down for any, uh, for any reason, then users can withdraw their assets if they want based on this, the data on the, on the chain, right? Um, so there's no asset risk. And, but eventually we do want to put the whole order book on chain. I mean, UIDX has a way of doing it, right? That seems to be working for them. Um, so, I mean, there's different possibilities. And I think the, the technology is upgrading at a speed that will allow us to, to achieve this in, in, near, in the near future. I mean, I don't think it's gonna be, um, it's gonna take forever. It's gonna take many years to do this, right? Uh, and the, that, so, so the point of singularity, I think, is still the, the experience has to be the same, if not better than centralized exchanges. And then DeFi has lower cost, right? Less, less people needed and utilizes the community. Um, versus like 4,000 uh, person centralized exchange. Uh, so then there's a big cost advantage here, right? And then uh, the tokenomics are such that everyone is rewarded, or I mean, that, that's the way it should be, is for their contributions, right? Whether they're a token holder, whether they're a trader or whatever. And that's also non-existent or barely existing in centralized exchanges. So I think it has all the elements there, the performance and the liquidity, um, and there's permissionless listings in DeFi, which is, I think is key, right? So once that's all in place, I don't see any reason that why the volume would not shift towards DeFi and eventually even from TradFi, given all the, you know, custody, all the custody solutions and the regulations and the KYC, all that stuff is in place, right? So I think that's kind of the point of singularity. I don't think it's gonna take 10 years for that to happen. I think it might be five or, or even less, yeah. 
cool. So, uh, Jerry also come from like, uh, if I recall correctly, also come from Trifai from Dash Bank, right? Um, so like from the traditional finan uh, like financial person perspective, uh, yeah, what's the different? Uh, yeah, what's the singularity points for for you? Because like you have like both the experience and CFI and DeFi. Yeah. All right. Uh, I think it's uh, uh, from a uh, fixed income perspective, right? Because I think this is uh, the big difference between these swaps or these uh, uh, the, the, the futures or perpetual futures or uh, fixed income. It's just the big difference is like uh, the fixed income in uh, in real life. We actually, uh, I, I think, the most of retailers they, they don't do fixed income directly with the uh, with the interbank market or with the wholesale markets because there is always like intermediary, so that uh, we go through like uh, the banks or security house or insurance companies or asset managers to purchase the fixed income related products, right? But here uh, in, uh, in DeFi is different. Right? So uh, we actually have a direct access. We allowed like permissionings from retailers and uh, also institutions. So I think the big difference is like uh, we need to, to create something uh, actually easy uh, uh, for uh, retailers to understand and to use. But uh, uh, at the end of the day, I think uh, for fixed income, uh, because of the nature of the products, you still need uh, like uh, institutions to help to push. Like, uh, oh, for example, like an ETF, right? So we have to have an uh, institution help to push to get uh, the different level. So same as the fixed income, right? If we can like, extend the year curve, right? You can get the year curve up to like uh, uh, six months, 12 months, or uh, uh, one, two, three years of uh, like interest rate on ETH, on BTC, then you will have a different scope of the DeFi markets. Right. So I think this is something that we uh, wanted to build, and also the key difference is, uh, is like uh, the fixed income. Uh, we have to go to peer to peer or the book or the auction process because it's not like uh, the swaps or perpetuals. That, uh, for example, uh, if you think of uh, the uh, the bank's uh, savings account, you put uh, the, your money into the pool, right? And then uh, some people have an OD account, like overdraft to borrow from the bank, right? The bid offer is wide. Or if you can think of like you put like four billion in Arve and somebody borrow one billion from Arve, what does that mean? That means that uh, uh, the interest rate they paid by Arve for the one billion, let's say for example, is four percent, right? The depositor only get one percent, right? The the capital inefficiency on the pool actually make this uh, the fixed income is very difficult to work. So it has to be the peer to peer for fixed rate borrowing and lending. So I think that's uh, the fundamental uh, the characteristic of the uh, the, the instrument. Uh, like uh, make it like a uh, 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 the peer to peer efficiency much easier to understand against the uh, the swaps or, or futures. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Thanks for sharing. Um, since we are all talking about like barriers and difficulties to that, uh, let's talk about like more ha uh, much happier stuff. Like, so what what do you guys see as the most interesting part coming to DeFi in the near future, or at least in the foreseeable futures within just like five years? Um, yeah, let's uh, start from from Tom since uh, you're like, uh, yeah, since the option is um, like more complicated or more complex than it's built on top of in, in, uh, um, in, in DeFi space instead of like lower handing fruit like uh, DAX or money market, right? So yeah, what do you see as very interesting in the future? Uh, like what I said uh, uh, before, uh, I, th I think uh, the improvement of the L2 and the, the, the speed of the, uh, the enhanced. Uh, actually, uh, I think there is a big, a big improvement uh, from in, in L2 uh, for the gas uh, uh, after Duncan upgrade. So I, and, uh, I think uh, this improvement and uh, well, uh, Decrease the barrier for the users uh, to use L2. Uh, from the very beginning, we use uh, L1 L1 chain, and uh, if if you sign a, a a transaction in Roma, maybe it cost uh, maybe twenty dollars, and uh, but uh, but it only cost uh, maybe uh, point one cent now. So I think it's it's very good, and uh, and also uh, as I mentioned, the uh, if the if the a account and paymaster, you don't have to uh, prepare ease for the gas. And I think the user experience uh, improves and uh, uh, which will attract more people to use the DeFi. And that's, that's, that will happen in the near future. Got it. How about Linux? Because like 
uh, OKS is probably uh, the newest uh, compared with the others. Like you recently just like started tapping into DeFi and I want to expand more. So you probably be more uh, optimistic about the space. And how do you see the space? And then what's interesting that thing or next things that will be integrated into OKX as well? Yeah, I think uh, the best the best role for OKX to play is to sit between uh, central exchanges um, versus, and versus DeFi, decentralized space. Um, we are, I think we are reaching a massive scale and scale that whether or not we can somehow bridge uh, in regulated manner that in some portion of some components of DAX or, or, or decentralized space, DeFi, that can somehow be introduced as to uh, under regular space, uh, so we can tell you that's a we can tell you that's a, that that's a regulation is always coming, uh, and I'm sure I'm I'm sure that's a, you can't hide forever. That's because permissionless is, de is decentralized, so there's no no there's no regulators coming in place. No, uh, the question is whether or not the regulators have um, the de the whether or not the, the, the sufficient understanding of which element that defines to be regulated. And OK has happened to play a role that we got the license over the places. And right now we can introduce at least some portion of the DeFi to regular space. That, I think that's massive. That could be massive to, to bring in uh, uh, regular capital into this space. Got it. Yeah, regulation is another thing that would be like the, the next very important things in the space. And everyone will face that. Um, yeah, do you want to comment on the, the news yesterday? Last night about like okay, it's removing to uh, uh yeah, gonna <laughs> remove the all the Indian users. Oh, no, just kidding. Um, no. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, so what? Um, yeah. What's all like Rains or like Temples or Jared's views on, on the interesting part? Cause like from my perspective, let me get uh, also share a little bit about like my opinions on this. Cause like it seems like it's been a while after DeFi 2.0, there's no new breakthrough in the space. Like, oh yeah, every you will probably see a lot of like new perfs, DAX every day, and using a little bit different uh, mechanism, but most of them are just like competing the same liquidity, basically, right? Um, or there will be uh, projects like, okay, saying that, okay, I'm doing like option uh, uh, options related stuff, like uh, options votes or options AMM. <laughs> Like there are more and more of that, and then, but eventually they will pivot themselves into like options per or something, right? So, for, yeah, I, I'm just curious because like I still don't have an answer right now because like, um, what's the next innovation that or what's the next experiment that we can do on chain from the derivatives perspective? Probably like 0.5 options, something like that, or what Pranapic is actually exploring right now. Um, yeah, do you guys have the, uh, any opinions or any idea or thoughts that could share uh, with, uh, with us? Um, actually, yeah, you're right. Uh, I think like most of the perp decks right now, we compete on points or airdrop. So <laughs> like uh, just depends on the airdrop, like, uh, you know, you can attract people definitely. Um, but that uh, will not last long. And, uh, um, to me, I, you know, like, uh, they are like many new projects, like really interesting, like Infinity Pool, they have this, like, uh, you know, you can leverage up, but you can, you will not be liquidated. I think that's, that's, you know, given design and, um, and like uh, baseline, the same, you can leverage up, you will not get liquidated. Um, I think like a, a lot of this concept actually, you know, like, have evolved from Uniswap V3, the, I mean like the SYK model. I do think that uh, that's probably like one of the breakthrough that if we only look at on, ch on chain, like uh, I do think that uh, uh, someone can make it, like a Panarchic, also a good example. Someone can make it, I mean like um, really working for the retail. I think that's the key. So. They are kind of new mechanisms, just like, uh, mm -hmm. it's just too hard to understand. It's just like they are like a certain, you know, you have to like um, use it in certain situation. But, uh, you know, once, you know, uh, we have enough technology that we can solve that, then I think that will be a question. 
Got it. Yeah. How about how about Jerry? Because like you're a building field fixer, you think? Um, like you're you're also sort of like exploring this field with uh, like bringing the traditional finance things on uh, on chain, right? And then it's uh, from what we claim, it's still like lacking in space and not so many competitors. So you definitely will have a very like uh, great thoughts that I could share with us. Yeah, I think uh, definitely increasing the uh, the new use cases is the most important things. I think we are uh, expect uh, the DeFi space to expand, right? So right now we've seen uh, even like the just like I mentioned earlier, the volume was traded like a double, triple, ten, even ten times. But what is the use? Use cases, right? So, and then uh, of course, if we just uh, uh, take one step back and then look around, like what do we want uh, our like uh, descendant to use the blockchain, and what do we want them to uh, uh, to find this uh, to to live with that, right? So we want some uh, people. We want them to have a uh, like a real asset. Uh, also, on chain asset at the same time. So, everyone on the street, they have a real asset, they have an on chain asset, right? They manage asset liability, they match their duration of all this, the, the, their own balance sheet for the corporates, for the institutions, or even for individuals, right? So, I think this is the, the key thing. How do we get there, right? We, get, we needed to get there with the, uh, of course, the, the most important is the fundamental infrastructure technology on this, the, the blockchain that we are all mentioned about. Right, there's so all like UI, UX, all TPS, all this, uh, uh, all the different uh, the, the the process that we can L1 or L2 or even L3, right? So we know that we it's not going to compete with the uh, the trifice, uh efficiency, but uh, it has to be somewhere that we can uh, we can reach uh, reach out. So I think uh, this is something that uh, I believe that this is the uh, the most interesting part to we see in the future is that uh, you are getting more. Like a, a mass adoption on this the uh, on chain assets to everyone. Got it. And what? Okay. So how about Linux and Rain? Uh, and Tom, do you do you think like what's the next interesting or derivatives that you see in this space? And probably yeah, probably it could, could just be like theoretical or something like a RWA RWU, based like YAS tokens or baseline <laughs> things. Like yeah, sounds like yeah, probably crazy or probably just there. Yeah. Yeah, uh, from my perspective, I've been in TradFi for 10 plus uh, 10 years or so before going, getting into crypto. Um, but a lot of the innovation can just happen from utilizing what's worked in TradFi uh, and adopting it to crypto, right? Some of the, uh, and adding in a few components, right? Like um, the decentralization or the, the user participation of it, like AMMs, right? Or, um, or like Perpetual or GMX, right? Like the, the user participation of it. Uh, into the product, right? Uh, using the blockchain instead of uh, centralized databases, right? Like, I mean, in our case, we have a chain just to settle trades. Like, why can't that replace CME clearing, say? Why, why is clear, our clearing house is not just on the blockchain, right? It should. Um, uh, and, I mean, it's, it becomes somewhat obvious for some of these, like, what we call innovations in, 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 in crypto um, that came from, uh, TradFi, but there has to be adoption, right, and, and really leveraging the blockchain. Um, and so I think a lot of that is interesting. And I mean, options is a small space that's huge in, in TradFi, like fixed income, right, all, all of this stuff. Uh, and I think it's all coming, right, and, and even the R, RWA stuff. So, uh, like, I think there's, I mean, there's a ton of, uh, it's just like, so basically, I think my formula is, the TradFi concepts and markets, uh, reshaping that demand and product to CFI or DeFi, uh, you fully utilizing the blockchain, uh, figuring out how to get users to participate in everything instead of a us selling product to users kind of uh, goal, right? And also adding in tokenomics that really reward all the contributors, which is what Web3 is supposed to be about. And there's gonna be very interesting stuff uh, that gets built, so. That's my perspective. Yeah, I think I don't see why the traditional asset class in finance that cannot be tokenized. I think everything can be tokenized, especially if it's income. So if uh, think about that, if uh, think about let's say thirty percent or fifty percent of current crypto assets is actually with the underlying of or based on the underlying of traditional asset class like treasury bonds and digital and 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 and, and di the different kind of debt instruments. Uh, I think that substantially increase uh, uh, the portfolio of the entire DeFi space. And because of DeFi, 
the accessibility of those kind of access will be substantially uh, increased and massive adopted by in global scale. So everyone can everyone can just hold a little piece, a, a tiny piece of treasury bills, even the fact that we've dealt uh, the minimum amounts of of, of of holding at the moment. So I think that's what we call the real financial inclusion. Uh, uh, right now, the current obstacle for tokenization of the, these kind of access probably is only related to uh, regulation. And right now, the regulation is keying different kind of roadblock by roadblocks. So we'll, I think the, uh, that that's more, must must be got got to be much one of more exciting, much more exciting the current trend. Got it. So do you see that if the regulation gets clearer and clearer and being more certain, so do you see the situation will be better? Very easy. So the very first roadblock that we clear in terms of regulation is where, what is Bitcoin, right? What is Ethereum? And how to trade? Uh, whether those trade on OKX or trade on Central Exchange or how to custody these kind of wallets, uh, these crypto assets. The next step of crypto regulation got to be related to tokenization of US dollar, tokenization of treasury bonds, uh, tokenization of, I don't know, what kind of national desk. And that, if that can tokenize, so why not put in Uniswap, AMM, water on tray in global scale? So, we, so probably in, in less than two or three years, um, somebody from India can have a crypto wallet, OKS okay, wallet, and, and buying a 80% portfolio holding treasury bills in US. Yeah, that's a really great point. How about Tom? Because like, option is definitely on the frontier of uh, advanced derivatives. Uh, I'm, very, I'm very happy to see there are so many innovative and uh, interesting projects uh, uh, on blockchain, such as uh, Best Line, ES Token. But, but uh, and also there, there were many stable coins, uh, calculation stable coins, but they failed. So in, my, in, in Roma's point of view, we may not uh, uh, think a, a new idea and uh, just uh, uh, write it to the smart country and uh, release to the public because uh, some, someone may uh, lose money in, inside and I, I'm not happy to see that. So, but, uh, but we, will, um, we will see the uh, successful experience from other projects and uh, uh, take the good, good part and, uh, and to, to, our, to our new project. So, uh, I, I think that's that's what I think. Got it. Yeah. Uh, thanks. Thanks everyone for sharing uh, this uh, idea. That let, let me conclude this. So it seems like uh, like for on building on chain derivatives, still uh, having a lot of hope, right? Um, and uh, we definitely see there will be so many like uh, diff like coming difficulties and barriers. And um, it seems like from the infrastructure perspective, yeah, the performance part, right? We are waiting for the performance to catch up. Um, like for an application level, we can also see that um, uh, there are a lot of progress around probably intent or AA actually uh, making like more uh, abstract the blockchain part more. And um, we, we also see that like from yeah, after regulation got clearer, probably like uh, the regulated liquidities will come in and actually can solve like most of the problems since like liquidity is always the problem. Um, so yeah, it seems like you still are having a lot of hope, and then hope uh, our audience also enjoying this panel. And uh, yeah, thank, 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 thanks everyone for like joining this panel. And then uh, let's give all of the panelists a, a great applause. Yeah. Thank you, June, and thank you, speakers.